succeeded. I got the last one right. <laughs> There comes a point when you realize that an education does not just involve the academic side of it. An education is everything that you want to learn and that you want to develop, every interest, every talent. And so when your kids start homeschooling and they begin to realize that they can spend a short portion of their day getting their academics done and then they can actually move on and do things that they're interested in and not just do it not just draw for an hour or draw for a half hour but start taking classes and get involved in groups with kids that are interested in the same subjects they're interested in and truly develop their talents they then become motivated learners they begin to plan their years they begin to get excited every year they begin to learn even during the summer they want to continue to create and produce and gain new knowledge and new understanding and develop more of themselves. Your kids do not have to wait until they graduate high school to begin their lives. They can begin their lives right now. Today we're going to hear from Michelle and she's going to tell us all about her homeschool journey with her five children. Hey, my name is Michelle and I'm going to share with you some of my homeschooling experiences. I have five children between the ages right now of 14 and 27, and they've all been homeschooled at least once in their lives. Lots of people have a lot of different reasons for why they began. Um, most of my reasons were because I had a deep concern about the, um, the social environment that my children were in and that they grew up to be uh, strong people, with good character and that they retain their spirituality and their faith in uh, Jesus Christ. And that has been the most important thing for our family. My older son uh, came out as a sophomore. He wasn't super excited about it. Again, he, he missed his friends, he missed his sociality, but here in Idaho and especially um, in the early 2000s, we had internet resources and there were a lot of opportunities for sociality and extracurriculars in a homeschool setting that my son just refused to take part of. And that was his own bad attitude. He missed out on a lot of fun. Uh, but it, there was a time, uh, I think it was the second year of homeschooling, where he said, Mom, I just realized how much time I was wasting sitting in a classroom. My lessons don't need to be 90 minutes long and I can get so much more done and I can pursue my own interests. And I was like, oh, finally, he got something. <laughs> it's connecting for him. Um, he did choose to participate in a high school program. So he did most of his classes here at home. And then he participated in a um, specialized class for entering into fire services, which also gave him some college credit to pursue a career and fire and safety um, services, he wants to be a firefighter. And so he did have that opportunity and took advantage of that. My uh, second son, he was able to procure a job at McDonald's and he worked about 30 to 35 hours a week and homeschooled. He got into uh, the college of his choice just based on his SAT scores. And he has said that the transition to college was fine. My younger son, um, who has never, ever, ever been in public school, um, never, ever, ever wants to be. <laughs> He's 14. His whole life as a child, he would watch movies and shows and that would depict the typical school stuff going on. And he's like, is that really what school's like? Is that how school is? And he's like, I don't want to be there because that was so not how our family culture was. And that was great. I'm like, yay, I succeeded. I got the last one right. <laughs> he had no desire to be at school, didn't miss it. Um, and he had a sweetheart that wasn't okay 
with the typical uh, worldliness that we see where put downs are considered normal and uh, we just kind of have to have tough skin. And I'm so glad that he didn't have to develop that as a young child, that he can be a, a kind, sensitive, tender person. He does still uh, cooperate, participate in our in a co-op that we do. I have uh, we have 16 youth in our co-op, and it's it's really fun. We've done plays, we've done graduations, we do projects. We're preparing for a marketplace event where the all the uh, youth will create a product and sell it at a local outdoor mall. Uh, so we have a lot of opportunities that you can pursue, and really the sky's the limit as far as what their interests are. Um, and what your other parents' talent talent base is. I've taught dance at our co-op, and we've had other people teach art and uh, herbology and other types of classes that that the parents know or have access to. And that's been the best um, the best for us is to kind of have a mix up uh, with the homeschool and then a, a co-op. My my kids have. All in all, felt prepared for the real world. Um, they didn't feel stilted or, or stunted or unable to, to cope. And uh, they, they generally enjoy what, they, what their educational and growing up experiences were. Thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing your story with us. And I personally feel a lot more motivated to get my kids up and moving and pursuing their interests. We are so grateful to have so many moms contribute and help in sharing their personal experiences. Be sure to join us soon. Get it. Drilling.